Next thing I'm talking about biomes or major life zones. Each biome is characterized by a particular type of climate, weather, temperature, vegetation, and animal life, and extends over a large region of the Earth's surface. Climate plays an important role in determining which part of the world will exhibit which biome. There are terrestrial biomes and aquatic biomes, both freshwater and marine biomes. How many biomes are there? Some people say there are only five major types of biomes. Aquatic, desert, forest, grassland and tundra. Others split biomes further into forest, grasslands, aquatic biomes. Forest, forests are separated into temperate rainforest, tropical rainforest, temperate deciduous forest, chaparral and evergreen coniferous forest or taiga. Grasslands are divided into savanna, temperate grasslands, chaparral, desert, tropical savanna, woodland and alpine, the mountainous biomes. Then comes aquatic biomes. Aquatic biome is split into freshwater biome, freshwater wetlands and marine seas and oceans, coral reefs and estuaries. First, tundra. Tundra is a Russian word meaning treeless northern region, the coldest of the biomes. Arctic tundra regions are marked by permafrost or permanently frozen soil. Most of the year the taiga is covered in darkness and in summer 24 hours sunlight. During summer a large variety of migratory birds visit tundra for nesting. Shrubs, lichens and flowering plants grow in the tundra. Taiga is a treeless biome. The arctic hare, lemmings and arctic fox are the permanent residents of taiga. Then comes the ever coniferous forest known as taiga. The world taiga is the Siberian word meaning primeval forest, also known as the boreal forest. This large biome covers much of the northern Europe and Asia and northern North America. Here winters are long and summers are short. All the evergreen trees have the ability to maintain the flow of water and the nutrients within their trunks and branches throughout the year. Their needle-like leaves are adaptations to cold and dry conditions. Most of the trees in this biome are known as coniferous, which means cone-bearing trees such as pine, spruce, fir, larch, hemlock and balsam. Some of the animals found in this forest are caribou, known as reindeer, and deer and elk, along with other predators like mountain lion, lynx, and timber wolves. Then comes temperate deciduous forest. If we continue move north or south of the equator to about 60 degrees latitude, one can experience cold winters, warm summers and abundant rainfall that is distributed throughout the year. The biome that experiences this climate is the temperate deciduous forest biome. Four distinct seasons mark this biome which appears in North America and Europe, but also in Eastern Asia, contains the world's tallest trees known as redwoods. Also, it contains giant sequoia trees, bristle cone pine trees, some of the biggest and longest living trees in the world. Fall color is its most pronounced feature. Then comes alpine biome. The alpine biome contains a range of animal and plant life, which varies with latitude or altitude. Higher elevations sustain fewer plant and animal species. Then comes chaparral biome. Drought resistant shrubs and dwarf evergreen oaks are characteristic of this biome. Oaks are drought resistant trees. Here winters are cold and rainy. Summers are very hot with little or no rain. Forest fires are frequent here. Chaparral covers Mediterranean climates in the Americas, Australia, South Africa, and Europe. Tropical rainforest. On the equator lies the biome known for its abundance and variety of life. Tropics receive a very high amount of rainfall and its dominant life 
forms or trees. Here there are no freezing temperatures and no seasons. Creatures simply love the tropics because tropical rainforests offer habitat for creatures and they also provide food for them. From the microscopic bacteria to all the way to the size of an elephant, all forms of life thrive in the tropical rainforest. Then comes deserts, the world's most arid biome. Deserts are inhabited by richly diverse plants and animals. All adapted to these regions, low rainfall. Desert terrain is dominated by rocks and dry sand. Deserts hardly support any kind of life because they have poor soil. Yet you can find some plant and animal life in the desert. Grasslands are the next. Grass is the dominant feature of grasslands. Grasslands are found in Central Asia, North America, and the Argentine Pampas of South America. America. Grasslands are known as priory in North America, steppe in Russia, palm pass in South America, and weld in South Africa. Grasslands support a wide range of plant and animal life. Grassland biomes are considered to have the most fertile, deepest of soil in the world. Today, most of the grassland lands are used for agriculture, produce much of the world's domesticated grass such as wheat. This is why these grasslands are referred to as the bread baskets of the world. Next is savanna. Grassy hills with scattered trees and shrubs dominate this relatively arid biome. Summers are short and rainy, winters are long and dry. South Africa contains some of the biggest savannas with acacia trees, baobab trees, and palms. Savannas support a wide range of animal life such as lions, elephants, zebras, giraffe, wild beast, and antelope. Freshwater biome. Freshwater lakes and streams are an important type of biomes because they support life along the large geographical space that crosses many borders. Lakes and streams and their shorelines abound with life from reeds to stone flies to humans. And the same lake or stream may be used by all of these organisms. When freshwater system is healthy, its water contains plentiful amounts of dissolved oxygen as well as plankton, insects, snails and fish. Organisms, the river bed or lake bottom are alive and well. The system does not contain levels of chemicals that make the water unhealthy for the creatures that live in it. Then comes the marine biome. Oceans cover more than 70% of the planet and contain at least as many species as live on land. There are still many areas of the deep ocean that have never been seen, explored or fully mapped by humans. Marine biologists divide ocean species into three groups. Plankton, which are floating, weak swimmers. Nectan, which are stronger swimmers such as fish. And benthos, or bottom feeders. There are five major types of marine biomes. Coastal waters, near shore zone, coral reefs, open ocean, and vent communities. Ecosystem, biome, ecology, it's a magical subjects. When we learn, it's a kind of revelation. They have hundreds of mysteries and through interacting with biomes and ecosystems, we can learn more and so that we can relate better with them. Thank you.